and we are live. Yo, 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 tell me what you know. Welcome to the Sunshine Show. Woo! <laughs> you guys, I have the most phenomenal guest in the house tonight. I have the one and only, the most magnificent, the most fabulous of them all. I have Brian Zach of Synergy. What's up, Brian? Wow. What an intro. That's like a great intro. Hi. Wow. Hi. I all I got is me here, though. <laughs> Tell me what you have been up to today. Thanks for having me so much. Um, I went check out the ocean, did my typical thing, took the motorcycle up to the ocean. I almost got hit by this motorcycle, like a driver on the Tesla, like sort of right in my lane. It was not cool. Be careful, motorcyclist. And then uh, back to the ocean, it was really rough. Like no one's scuba diving today. I like scuba dive like that's my thing so then uh i came back home and i went to the ceramic studio and i worked on a bunch of clay pots and throwing and i threw eight pounds of clay which is like really kind of a lot of clay to deal with uh for me which was really fun and then now i'm back here and i packed all my gear for tonight's night dive i'm gonna go out tonight and tomorrow and saturday i'm like starting to get really busy with that so it's been a really fun, crazy, busy couple of days and synergy stuff on top of that. So like major, like tomorrow we're releasing the album, which is like why I'm here. Like, and uh, the music video for Aqua Blue will be tomorrow. So many shows coming up and just like trying to keep up on all the socials and sharing and responding to people, just like all the really fun stuff. So it's been like, I'm like, it's like Christmas right now. Awesome. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Um, everybody at home, everybody listening on the podcast, today is going to be a really great interview. I've been waiting about a year to interview Brian, and I'm so stoked to have him on the show. Let's check out who's in the chat. We have Jesse, we have Don, we have Sam Tucker in the house, we got Dwayne Benton, we got Michael Mike. You guys, thank you all for hanging out. If you have any questions for Brian, drop them in the chat. You know how this works. So Brian, you seem like you have a lot of things on your plate. So you're an artist, you're a scuba diver, you're a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I just like having fun and I'm very fortunate to have so many passions and things I love. So yeah, it was good to go for it. But yeah, diving and reggae music primarily and any kind of artwork. So yeah. Very cool. We got my wife, Lindsay, in the house. What's up, Lindsay? Uh, Jesse says, excited for the album and to see you live on the 23rd. The 23rd at the Pub Rock Live with Cal Smith and uh, Desert Fish. At the, yeah, and Scott Stiller is on hometown show for me. Very nice. We yeah. have Speak the Rebel in the house. We've got Mike Torrin. We have the whole fam bam. So Jesse says, I love Brian's photography. So you didn't tell me you were a photographer too. Well, I, I, that's, I assume she's talking about all the underwater stuff, like all the underwater photography. Because yeah, I go with every time I'm diving, I like you cannot, you only miss so many opportunities without the camera and you never want to miss it. You don't want to be that guy without the camera because you just, that's of course the time it's going to be really good. So I always have it with me and it's been really amazing just like getting some really cool shots and videos. And I obviously use that to like get more of an audience with the scuba business and stuff, but thank you so much. Like that's, that's, I love getting that feedback. Like, so what is it like i've never gone scuba diving myself i do live very close to the ocean and i should probably learn one day maybe i can come take lessons from you um but what is it like being under the water and like relying solely do you go do you like uh go with the tank or do you just free dive yeah no with the tank yeah yeah so what is uh, it like being underwater knowing that you're solely restricted to this like tank of water but or tank of oxygen but you're also like under there with like all this amazing like sea life and like creatures wow so so nice of you to ask so like there's so much going on here like there's so many things to say but basically diving is and the ocean as you know i don't know if you swim and surf like everyone loves the ocean is super into it for whatever reason but uh uh, like 
Gosh, I just lost my train of thought. I'm a little oh, nervous. that's okay. We were talking about what is it like um, being under the Ooh. water and seeing all the sea life. That's right. That's right. So there's a couple of things at play, like the brain pressure on your brain, the focus on the breath, the exhilaration of like being in a natural environment, and then like the social atmosphere of like being with a buddy. These are all really, really, really amazing and healing things to have in your life on the regular. And then it's like being connected with something that's like pretty awe-inspiring and greater than yourself leads towards this like kind of gateway towards the spiritual connection with the ocean. So um, there's so much there. I actually just got two days ago, we did this interview with with my friend Kim and she's, she does all this amazing work training veterans for PTSD with scuba diving, using, <clears throat> using scuba diving as healing for tra trauma. And like, I'm such a whiny baby on Facebook that like, I am like, oh, like I love scuba diving because it has healed so much of my personal trauma. Um, and so she caught wind of that and she was like, hey, like I would love, this is like right up your alley. Why don't you come over and talk about it? So at first I was a little like overwhelmed because these are like legit veterans that have actual real trauma and not just like heartbreak stuff or, you know, whatever you're, you seemed like I was going through at the time, but we totally have this amazing connection and we're able to relate on how powerful scuba diving is and how healing it is. And it's just like, because there's also this other thing where you have to be so present. Yeah. You have to be so present in the moment. There's nothing else that matters. So you totally leave all the stuff at the surface. And in those 40, 50 minutes to an hour or whatever, you are literally, it doesn't even matter. You're not Brian. You're not even a person. You're not this, you're not that. You're just like, pure pure being and so it's like i'm shocked that it's not a bigger sport i'm sure it will be um because i'm going to talk about it as much as humanly possible and help the sport you know grow as much as i can because it's like headed there but uh, yeah that's kind of if i could put in a little capsule amazing like the best thing ever so i've seen some of your like pictures and you like get to hang out with sea otters right sea lions sea lions like so do they like come up to you are they like little dogs of the sea they are so playful and curious this little picture right here this is uh al Scholl painted that for me and that's actually one of my photos that he painted which is an honor to have some of his art but um they're like my best friends they're so fun like so every october they get in the water they're born in like june july and october they get into the water and those first couple of days, first couple of weeks, you're literally bonding with these sea lions. It's the first time they've ever met a person. So they are like very curious, very interested, engaging, like, and they, they have a whole life at La Jolla Cove, which is very populated with people. So they begin to be very used to people always coming in and out. And so they learn how to like mess with you and play with you. And they seem to have a total, um, like affinity to people i call them they're like the dogs of the sea although i recently understood they're actually closely related to bears more than they are to dogs which is pretty fascinating but uh, they kind of would miss us if we disappeared like there's harbor seals here too they would not really miss us they're like the cats of the sea they're like you can leave them they'll feed themselves but the sea lions would be like where's where's the scuba dude so they're the best and i love them I just love that. I'm a huge animal person. And I love like, when I first moved to Santa Cruz, like I seen all the these things in the water. And I thought that they were sea lions or like seals, but they were actually people wearing wetsuits. I mean, mind you, I come from Texas. So it was like, you know, a big shock for me. But when I finally got to see the little um, sea otters and like the sea lions and their little faces when they come oh my god dude I instantly fell in love um so anyways I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about that so thank you for sharing that with me yeah if you're ever in San Diego we'll go snorkeling or we'll go like literally meet them they're like they're so cool and fun so yeah if you time it right sometimes you don't see them at all sometimes you see a ton of them like a whole 20 of them just hanging out with you. Sometimes they bite your fins and your head and stuff. And like, but always so gentle, very much like a puppy. It's yeah. just like kind of testing, test biting, but never any animosity. And even the big bulls that can get like 1200 pounds, like 800 pounds, they're, they're just enormous. They're huge. 
but um they will come and like dive bomb your face and blow bubbles as signs of like territorial stancing you know um but never any with any of the marine animals i've ever came in contact with no animosity no genuine hatred or animosity everyone always thinks like they're, just, they're gonna get you and it's like i think that's just a human thing i don't know it's just weird like i've never experienced that yet with a shark or like a sea lion that's like i'm gonna you know um, yeah weird. yeah that, uh, we need to be more like the animals of the ocean everybody listening at home uh, well yes and no yes and no because they like to eat each other too like <laughs> Yeah, there's no cannibalism for another day. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing safe in the ocean, right? Like even the people sleeping, someone's gonna eat you. But there's this understood thing that that is kind of like the what is it? The Jungle Book, the Law of the Jungle. Yeah, it's like you never know when's your time, so you gotta just like live it up, eat or be eaten. Dude, so I actually somebody posted this on on as a Facebook status earlier today, and she was basically like listen, everybody's going to die and, you know, your time is going to come and you'll live much more peacefully if you can make peace with the fact that death is a, a real factor for everybody. And I don't know why that hits so differently. I was like, damn, I've never really looked at it that way. Instead of being fearful, just sort of accept it and live every day like your last. <laughs> never know. Yeah, I'm fascinated with death for sure. Um, no rush for me, but definitely a curiosity. I think everyone should have a healthy curiosity of what's in the afterlife because that, that makes life all the grander, you know? Yeah, for sure. Really Let's good. see. We have, a, we have a comment here from Jesse. She goes, I didn't know you were from Scottsdale. I read your story about living, I believe in Mexico or South America. Tell about, could you tell us more about your time out there, out of the U.S.? Yeah, so I grew up in Phoenix, actually, not Scottsdale, but the town right over, very close to that area. So um, good catch on that, Jess. But um, yeah, I lived for briefly for a few months in Honduras. I spent that's where I started diving. It was awesome. It was an amazing, life changing experience. And then uh, I lived up kind of further north than you. I was up in Humboldt and Southern Oregon for many years, and then. Um, We'd go on tour and every time we would go tour, it was like San Diego just always had this vibe that was like, I could kind of do this. Like, I like this place. I like what it's about. It's super cool, great weather. Um, so one day we're all like, let's do it. Let's go. Let's move. And, you know, it kind of whittled down the band members. Everybody always whittles down when you do a move like that. But we ended up trying to shoot for San Diego, but we overshot and we ended up in Baja, Mexico which was like a three year stint in Mexico, which was an amazing experience. And we were on the road a lot, we were touring. So we were like, it worked out great. We were getting really cheap rent and living in Mexico. And like, it was a really fun time, but looking back on it, like, I'm so happy to be back here. Like we got our house broken into like countless times. And like, it was just different. It was such a different time. And I didn't have the diving. I was like missing this thing. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I took a really big stint off diving after Honduras because I didn't, couldn't see how it would fit into my world here in San Diego, part of this like self-worth thing where it's like, you have to do the band or you have to do the diving, you can't do everything. And then it was like one day just, it's like, why not? You can have, it's, it's your world. Like do whatever you want to do, like go for it. What's, what's the worst that can happen, you know? Um, so that was Mexico. It was awesome. I love Mexican food, so that worked. So would you recommend somebody who is like wanting to like take a, a, a big move? Would you recommend Mexico as like something potential? Absolutely. Yeah. If you're trying to do like expat lifestyle, Baja was pretty darn comforting. I mean, it was pretty, really, really nice. And there's a spectrum, you know, I mean, you can live, we lived like, we lived both of these ways. We did like the really nice security 24 hours that that's there you know and you can live pretty good like that or you can live like you know barbed wire on the fences and it's like you're on your own a little bit more kind of thing we did that too and so you can have whatever you want and what you can do but the money goes a lot further there which is good for when you're on tour so that was really good but it was really hard for like 
all of everyone was yeah relationships were in the tank yeah trying to date girls like in the united states even trying to date girls in mexico like it was it was rough like there was some really interesting uh scenarios so yeah go for it know what you get into learn spanish um, <laughs> well that's funny because jesse actually asked if you speak spanish uh enough to like like get people to think i know enough and then they'll actually start talking in spanish and then i'm like oh despacio like please like yeah i can't no i, I wish because my family my mother's side is from uruguay so they all speak spanish and it like kind of stopped she didn't like we didn't continue that tradition so i always get frustrated like if you have that ability to be bilingual like keep it alive right like that's such a gift so no i don't but i wish i did how about the people that can speak like three or four languages that shit blows my mind do you speak any other languages not really i can speak a little bit of spanish because i'm from south texas so i definitely took you know my fair share of courses but as far as like if i speak it regularly i don't if somebody's talking to me i can pretty much like figure out what they're saying but it's very like text-mex it's not like uh textbook spanish you know yeah the uh the street slang i grew up in arizona you know so like that south stuff you know it's like you you know you know enough you know it's like i know when people are talking smack and i'm like, like, like yeah. I, speak, I speak spanish bro they're like oh i'm like not really i just got a couple words but yeah i, like yeah. I definitely when the 7-eleven cashier called me a bendeja i'll tell you what i knew what he was saying and i was not happy with that okay mr 7-eleven cashier guy i still love you uh let's see Lindsay is asking uh is jerry your bass player jerry is our bassist yeah as of like Oh, it's been a while now i think as of yeah as of as of a while ago he's the longest lasting synergy player so it's been like i think three or four years with jerry so like yeah we've had a lot of we've had a lot of players in synergy before like well let's talk a little bit about synergy let's talk about the history where how the band form and all the goods and stuff you got just put it out there just bring it out there. <laughs> um so yeah, Arizona, I was in college, started college. I was actually, before that even, I was in ska bands and like, I had a band called Osmosis, which is a really dope band name. Anyone wants it, but um, ska bands, punk, a little bit of punk, like they kind of steered away from punk. It never really was like my thing. I always liked a little more singer style. Like I wanted to, like that crooner style, like that sweet spot. Like you, I like UB40 stuff. I like people you can tell you're singing, you could hear it really like that. And I wasn't into the anger. So I always was attracted to reggae and then that. Wanted a reggae band. I learned that I could sing or I just started doing it because that was all that would like feel good at the time. And people were like, dude, you're good. Or people would be like, you sound like David Hines. And I'd be like, I don't know who that is. They're like, Steel Pulse, you've heard of Steel Pulse? I'm like, I've never heard who that is. And they play, I'd be like, I hear what they're talking about because there's some of the vibrato stuff. Hey, like, I don't know whatever that he's doing, but um, that was cool. So that was like getting into reggae, you know, evolving and we like putting together these bands and uh, oh my gosh, so many transformations. So Synergy has like moved, transplanted to like five different, places starting in Flagstaff, Arizona and college. And then we moved to Humboldt like halfway through college. Why we thought that was a good idea. Cause we all heard there was like, you could trim weed up there. And like, there's pot just everywhere. So we were like, well, there's gotta be reggae, right? And there was, but there wasn't enough really people to saturate like a, a real thing. What I felt like it could be. So uh, then I went to Southern Oregon and started like touring up there and Southern Oregon was like, everything i liked about humble but without the shitty weather it was just like nice and sunny and it had the same hippie vibe and like the same herb everyone's growing and it was just like a seriously committed community of like they love music like they just appreciated it so ashland oregon was amazing and then after that it was like mexico and later san diego so yeah it's kind of a lot wow dude so how have you been able to carry the band 
from state to state? Is it basically you're changing a lot of band members? I mean, you're obviously the heart and soul of the band. So there's been every time we did one of those moves, like a, more than one guy has come along for the journey. You know, the last time it was just Josh, um, our, our previous guitarist, he came down. But before that, we were pretty much a group. I mean, it was pretty, pretty solid. It's pretty fun. But also a ton of people turning over. It started out with a drummer and drummers were really hard to find. And then, I mean, we went through everybody. I, I, I started as a guitar player. I didn't even know how to play keyboards when I started this band wow because there was a slow like there was not enough keyboard players it was really hard to find i was like i'm gonna just do it and then because again because of necessity i'm still on that keyboard but if i had it my way i would just be singing like dancing around being a little more performance stuff but Hell yeah, we got, sorry we got michael v in the chat what's up michael how you doing michael v i love michael v Tell me about Michael V. He's an incredible artist. He, um, I was thinking about this. I've actually, not that it's saying much, I wish it could be more, but I probably supported Michael V. Like, I actually, he's an artist I want to support. You know, as an artist yourself, it's like kind of hard to like shell out things, you know, but like, and I want to pay people what they're, what I think I can afford and what I think that, you know, you know, so he's helped me out and he's painted me a picture of my girlfriend, like a portrait of my lady that I paid him for. And he just did this amazing piece. And when I saw it, I was like, dude, I like how much, like, I don't want to insult you, but like, I, I have this, can I give you this? And he was like, send it, let's go. So I, I'm waiting for it, but um, really good friend in Oregon. And he uh, lives with some other really good friends at the Hive. Very the Hive, cool. have you heard of them? Dude, Michael, thanks for hanging out with us. Please hit me up after the interview. I would love to get some artwork done from you. Um, thank you guys all for hanging out with us. I really appreciate you guys. I know time is precious. We are having a full on party with Brian and Zach in celebration of their upcoming album drop. Oh my God. Tomorrow, it's like really happening. I can't believe it's like, and let me tell you the amount of like, first the content, so much like heart. I'm more like, I think about like heartbreak a lot. It's just like one of the things that pushes me, motivates me, but like so much like stuff has been in this album encapsulated. And this has been an eight year process, like eight years that I like, I mean, ridiculous. Cause I'm obsessive DIY. Like it, it's a problem. I need to delegate. And I'm sure you feel the same. I mean, there's, it sucks. It sucks because you want help, but no one wants to do it like the way you do. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. So this is fucking phenomenal. It's been eight years in the fucking works and tomorrow all of your dreams are coming true, Brian. Yeah. Well, just like, I already feel it like, cause Aqua Blue came out like, what was it, a week or two ago? And I just felt like this total like burden lifted because as an artist, you're like, I got to get this out, but I got to keep it hidden too. I got to like hide it, you know, cause like you don't want it to get out, but I'm just sitting on it. It's been sitting on it for so long sunshine. So like, I'm excited. And I've decided all I want people to do is listen to the music. Like, I don't care, you know, cause you have to think you're doing this for 15 years. You start thinking you've gone through the whole spectrum of what you want out of music. You know, like, what do I want? It's like, I want to be big. I want to be, I just want to tour and have fun. Like, whatever and then it's like now i'm like i love my little life here but i like love music too and then i'm like dude like i just want people to hear it and make their own judgments on it and just like if it can be and it's already amazing because like with the 15 years you end up becoming kind of somehow respected in the industry in a way you know what i mean they're like wow you've actually like stood the test of time a little bit thanks like, a lot <laughs> yeah thanks here's a here's i'll take you seriously now because i didn't take you seriously for the last however long you know and it's kind of sad that's the case but it's amazing humbling and so like ah, like so sweet sometimes i go around and people are like oh my gosh synergy and i'm like what like you know what synergy is that's so crazy like my heart is like ah. so i just decided if people hear it awesome but i care not about the 
I mean, I wish we could get on these big festivals and play and have a bigger draw and audience. I mean, yeah, that'd be great. But like realistically expectations, I just hope, like, I hope you listen to it. Oh, if you yeah. could hear it, I'd be happy, you know, like. Oh, like, dude, I'm going to be all over it. Okay. Tomorrow. Um, I want to know how do we get our hands on it? Is there a pre-save link? If there is Jesse or somebody um, from the chat, could you drop it in the comments so everybody can go check out the album tomorrow? So sweet. So thoughtful. Yes, there is a pre-save link. It's like all over the Synergy and my personal page on Facebook. Um, awesome. Yeah, there's a link. And I have physical copies because that was another thing. Like It's the age of crazy times. And like, as an artist, you're like, do I even need to have CDs? They're like on their way out, dude. Like, who cares? And then a friend, Chris Warner, like a couple of really good friends that really care about me, gave me some really good advice throughout this process, you know, connecting people through reggae and Tim Azzy and um, Chris Warner. And he was like, bro, like there's two types of people. Like you pull up on your motorcycle and there's some really cool people at the gas station and you could tell they're your vibe, but like you either have a CD in your pocket or you don't have a CD in your pocket. Like, who do you want to be? That. Yeah, that's yeah. good advice. So I went for it and like, cause life is short and at the end of the day, like what seems like it's a big deal at the time. You, it's not. You yes, know. you have nailed that. And that has been a reoccurring theme with my past couple of guests. Life is too short and it doesn't fucking matter. You guys, you gotta go get, get out live our fucking dreams, live our life and not dwell so much on this like self-created like drama and shit that at the end of the day, it does not matter. It doesn't matter at all. Um, so how do we get a physical copy of this CD? Is that available on your website? It will be shortly. I'm currently like making the, all the Shopify links and all that stuff. But yeah, I got them. I got them there in the garage or hit me up personally. But yeah, um, Whew, it's gonna be so good. like yeah we're just gonna be like whatever uh, all your dreams are coming true like all the hard work that you have put into this tomorrow the world gets to fucking enjoy it with you brian These little seeds like little so many seeds all the days and this whole like i can i would be disgusted if i could fathom the hours spent on this process and like people would be shocked at the amount of money like the funding for, that you have to put up to just to get people to like see it let alone the whole recording process and yeah it is not an easy industry it's like and when I got into scuba diving I realized that I thought because scuba diving is a very notoriously difficult industry for scuba dive professionals believe it or not even though it's one of the most expensive sports in the world. Sure. And so I thought, oh, wow, everyone said, well, you know, this is a labor of love. Don't do it if you're getting in for the money, which I thought was so funny because I was making, I was doing better than I'd ever been. And I said, dude, I don't know if any of you have been musicians before. Obviously not, because this is pretty good. You know, diving's much more stable, even though it may not be stable in the world, you know, whatever. But for a musician standards, <laughs> Go be a scuba diver, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Like, yeah. Um, so Lindsay, actually, we have a whole lot of people here in the chat. You guys, I love you all. And I promise I'm going to get to your comments and questions. I'm a little backed up here. I'm going back, back, back. So Lindsay says he plays bass for Aaron Wolf, too. Uh, uh, so your bass player. What's his yeah. name again? Jerry Vasquez. Gerardo. H Gerardo. Hello. Um. I just have to, I have to mention how much I love Aaron Wolf. I um, the last time I was doing a stream with oh my god I can't remember who but um Lindsay oh Muffin but Good Vibes guy uh, uh, yeah uh, Craig Knight Craig Knight 
Yeah. Yep. So, um, and Aaron was with Lindsay and I really wanted to give him a shout out because Aaron really came through for me last year when I was going through a huge, difficult time and put on a big fundraise, a, a GoFundMe for Oliver Edgar. And it was just the kindest and sweetest thing I feel like that anybody's ever done. He didn't have to do it. I just did an interview with him and he's like, can I help you out? And I'm like, sure. And Aaron, if you watch this, I just love you and thank you so much. And apparently you have a good choice of bass players because Brian shares your bass player. <laughs> we are, yes, yes. Jerry's a great guy. He's amazing and he's a really good dad. I love that about him. He just had a baby. Um, like after like as soon as we got back from tour from covid like <laughs> they decided they were gonna have a kid and he is such a good dad and him and his wife or his girlfriend whatever they're like faith if you're watching i love you um they're so sweet and watching my friends i don't i'm sure you know we're getting that age where yeah i don't know if you have children or not but yeah it's like crazy like seeing your friends have humans and then you're watching them and they're like really killing it like they're like but you could see the love that they have for this being and you're like damn like should i have a kid like what's going on? like you're kind of like in your back of your head i'm getting like a little baby fever like so you, yeah i'm like i'm but don't worry I'm, I, I'm i won't i promise myself I won't. but um <laughs> don't worry no we're all encouraging you to have um <laughs> offspring okay make <laughs> life Oh, I would love to be a dad one day for sure. And a grandpa. I mean, come on. It's got to be an amazing experience, you know. Um, but whatever. Do you have children? I do. My son is 23. He'll be 24. Get out of here. He's young. Uh, I started really young, one and done. And it's crazy because now I like am raising, you know, I got a new pig when San Diego. Um and it's like he's a perpetual toddler he's always just always needing attention all the time and i didn't really know what i was signing up for before i got into the pig life but now i'm full pig life you know um but yeah my son sorry my son lucas he graduated from otis college of art and design and he's an illustrator in la well damn hello good for him that's amazing he's be so proud Yes, he is my sweet baby and I just love him so much. Let me check this chat really quick because we are getting backed up on comments. Um, we have Rick Bozart in the house. We got David Hammer. We got Dwayne Burton. We got Mama Can too. Thank you, Jesse, for dropping that link. Everybody, after the interview, make sure you go and pre save that album. It is dropping tomorrow. Um, everybody is saying how awesome you are, how badass you are on the keys. Um, uh, we got Reyes Cisneros from Taos, New Mexico. So um, Jesse had asked about your dreads. Now, I remember the first time I met you, it was outside a show at Winston's and you still had your dreads. And that was something that I think really, uh, are, were people attracted to you because of the big hair and like the whole deal, right? And so she's asking, what made you decide to cut the dreads? I have them. I have them right over there. You want to see them? Do you really? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I'll pull them out after the story. But um, oh my gosh, the scuba diving. Simple answer, the scuba diving. Really? So you oh, gave up oh, yeah. all those years of like dedication for your scuba diving? Without hesitation. Yeah, I mean, and I and let me tell you, and anyone that knows me knows, like I literally love those those dreads. I mean, I like that whole i mean like i mean again i started when i was 15 i had them for 17 years they were like to my knees like i, I it was like a life's work a dream of mine there was so long in my life i was like i'll die with dreads like i'm gonna be forever when i fall they'll have dreads and it's like until you meet something that you love that's greater than that love right so once i started diving and doing it like every day having dreads that freaking long and like that heavy and you're always wet all the time guys it was like horrible and it was stinky and it was like a wet dog it was just there was nothing i could do it was like and it wasn't enjoyable like i was not enjoying it anymore and i and then i started getting into the like this psychological thing about like what do people know me for do people just are people looking at me just because 
you have some oddity, you know, like you have some weird feature that not many people could do. You have a discipline. So they think it's cool. So people are chiming into that. And that got kind of like weak. That just kind of got a little shallow compared to what I feel like I was offering. Cause it's like, dude, I'm a person. Like I have, I'm, so I realized it's like, I want to be known for the deeds that I do and not just like some weird feature body part thing, you know? So it was like, um, again, hands out without a doubt, one of the best things I ever did, but it was really hard to let them go. And I like, I was shaking when I did it. I mean, I was like, the energy was unbelievable. The un like the release of energy when I cut the last one off, like the back of my neck right here. I mean, it was like floating chi. I've never felt that any other time in my life, except when I did acupuncture my first time, like an swell of energy coming up the spine. And then after that, I was just like, la, 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 la. like, I mean, cause those dreads when you have them like that, it's like a handicap. It's like, you can't go to the bathroom without, like holding them, you can't take a drink out of the faucet or out of the drinking fountain. You can't put on a seatbelt or put on a t-shirt without sleeping, sleeping. You're like sleeping on them. It's like, people don't realize how much work that is, that like like that hairstyle is. Ugh. Wow. Not, yeah, you want to see him? I'll go grab him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go grab him, man, please. So uh, let's see, you guys. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Lindsay says, that's some Kundalini shit. Yeah. And Jesse so says, I knew the dreads would be an impactful story. Oh my God, look at those. Yeah, there's so, I mean, and I love them. They're still here. I want to put them like, I want to like display them or make some cool art piece out of them. Um, but yeah, I've had people like want to put them on, like reattach them onto their head. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to like. <laughs> Make a full on wig for Halloween, buddy. That's what I thought too. But I, you know, it's just this weird thing. It's like, you don't want to like disrespect them in some weird way, even though they're like, it's just dead hair, you know, but it's like, you know, it's like kind of my life. That's my whole, uh, like my childhood, but adulthood. Yeah. So whatever. I get why people are so weird about hair. It's a weird thing, but I get it. it. It is. It's a whole, it's a whole situation. Uh, by the way, if you guys want some of this hair, you can get it on amazon.com. Okay. Hey. It's nice and silky. <laughs> uh, today's episode is sponsored by Pepsi. No, it's not. I'm just fucking with you guys. Okay. We are having a good time tonight. I love you all so much. Brian, thank you for chilling with us. I hope you're having a good time as well. <laughs> My mom says she's very proud of you and everything is going to be fantastic. Thanks, mom. That's <laughs> your mom, but I'll just call her mom. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I love that. Thanks for the support. And that's nice that you have that support from your mom. Lindsay says, I saw you guys in Joshua Tree in October for Dub Shack. You guys are fucking awesome. Thanks, Lindsay. I appreciate you seeing us. I loved that show. It was really fun. <laughs> Can we get up there again? Go ahead. What did you say? Oh, I love that area. Joshua Tree is pretty cool. I, I wish she was closer. She lives in San Diego now. Don't you live in San Diego? I do. I live in Ocean Beach. Perfect. So you guys can definitely... Oh, no. She said she knew that because she's going to your album release show at the Holding Shack on 419. The Holding Company, 419. It's going to be amazing. Perfect. Dwayne says, let's talk about vinyl. I'd love to have that on vinyl. We do too. We definitely do. I, I look, it's like, they're so expensive to make, but yes, working on it definitely would be worth it. There's been enough. Um, I got If you come across, like if anyone comes across like short run distribution stuff, cause it's like a housing thing too. You never know how much of this stuff is going to sell. So buying like a hundred or a thousand copies of something like your room becomes there's only so much space you know yeah um, but yes i would love that um let's see jesse is asking who did the artwork for aqua blue jesse these are all great questions these are shoe in questions it's like a there's a mole in there um i did did you really yeah of course you did of course yeah i'm, I'm obsessive i'm really crazy with it like I have a hard time once I let go of stuff, it'll probably be really good in, for my life. But I, I like to control, like I have all this art stuff building inside of me. So when it comes to like 
this album all the albums that I, I i i do all the artwork for it yeah it's all graphic design stuff like photoshop and illustrator as well so i totally get where your son's good for him that's a really fun industry i mean that's killer i love i love that stuff so valuable to any business yes let me tell you my son charges me 300 dollars a design it's not a cheap industry <laughs> it's not. but i tell you it takes so long to make this stuff i mean it's crazy like i spent from concept to the finalized thing and you, you gotta understand like i'm not getting paid for this stuff so it's on my own part of my rules are like don't force creation. You know, like if, you, if you're not feeling it, then leave it alone. Put down the paintbrush for a while and go do whatever the hell else you're doing. Don't force inspiration. Um, which is probably why it's taken eight years to finish this album. But uh, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. But yeah, uh, good stuff. I mean, so it takes really long. It takes a really long time is what I'm saying. Sure. Can uh, anybody hire you to do artwork on their projects or is that something that you only do for Synergy? Like you can try, but I'm like so stingy with my time and my like those particular skills because like this, it depends if it's the middle of winter and I have nothing to do and I need money, then like if I know you, I'll be more, you know, it's like, but honestly, I, I, I don't love working for other people's stuff. Like, it's like weird. It's like, I don't know. Like I've had a couple people do it and I don't mind it. But because I feel like way more pressure for them than I do for my own stuff. So it's easier for me to just like make stuff because it feels good instead of like, oh, my God, someone gave me a couple hundred bucks. And I have to like, if this isn't perfect, and if they don't like it, it's like, I'm not going to do that to myself. So don't call me for that. <laughs> That's how I feel about like tracking for other people's projects. Like I get so hung up on like, oh, shit, I got to like nail it nor note for note. And are they going to like it? And, you know, I just get so wrapped up in my in my mind and and sometimes i don't it's not the best to try to hire me to do base for your track people okay i do love you all and uh you know and i and i appreciate it but i just get really like fucking in my head about it <laughs> um let me see so my friend sammy out of corpus i love you sammy it was great talking to you last night on the phone you just got out of the hospital back at home he says if i wore glasses i would want those thanks sammy i love them thanks i had black ones like these same they call these wayfarer glasses style by the way i don't know but um zenioptical.com plug is like the cheapest place to get prescription glasses i know because i've been wearing glasses like my whole life <laughs> and so i had these in all these different colors you know because they're cheap or whatever so i got you know, I was like, get black or whatever color. And I kind of experimented. And there's something about these that like really, I don't know, it's funny. Like you wear black and they, people don't see it. And then you wear the bright blue and they're like, oh, I see your face. You're like, huh, that's weird. Oh, cool. My I was mom, here sorry, my mom's all about this any optical. She's like, oh, girl, that's where she gets her glasses. So, <laughs> yeah, Hey, Corpus Christi, too, by the way, like. I love the the artwork. Talk about amazing artwork in that town. I don't think I've ever seen a town so pimped out with murals and stuff. Like I was only been there one time it, with my, we toured with, we were on tour with Mike Pinto and some other band. I forget, but it was like just walking around there. I was like, I wonder if there's any diving because like there is diving out there, but it's not like I don't think anything worth home writing about like oil rig diving or yeah. some <laughs> ugly. Kind of diving. It was it didn't sound good. Like I don't know, but. Maybe uh, wrong. old tadpole wants to say hello. Do you want to say hello? He's my little sea. Oh. He's like my little sea lion. Say hello. Oh. So what are those types of dogs? They're called Cholos Quintly. They're a Mexican hairless. They're an ancient Aztec breed. And the Aztecs used to use them for healing as heating pads when they were sick because they're so much warmer than regular dogs because they don't have hair. So they radiate the body heat they are so cool i've like i've actually seen one in mexico in legit like way down in mexico and beautiful dogs i think they're cool i mean some people don't like them i think they're so cool i've been really into your dogs they always win the ugliest dog contest every year 
Um, right. And they don't have a lot of hair, and so they don't have a lot of teeth. So he literally only has two little vampire teeth. It's so cute, though. He's like a little sweet baby. Uh, does, he have, does he have allergy skin problems ever? No, no. He needs, like, clothing, and he needs, like, sun uh, block if he goes outside. But he's, yeah, he's good, man. The only thing, he's been having, like, seizures and issues, but I've been taking care of it with medication. Um, let's see. Lindsay says he's the cutest, ugliest dog ever. <laughs> let's see we got so many people in the chat i'm sorry that i'm backed up you guys uh thank you all for hanging out with us jesse goes i promise i'm not a stalker i'm just pumped for the new music and art <laughs> um let's see chelsea lane love you brian you rock so hard hi chelsea thank you appreciate you i love her little crystal she did she's an artist too she made a really cool crystal it's really nice doesn't she sing and play guitar as well she does. She's also a very multi, multi-talented person. And I wanted to say real quick, um, do you give C you CBD drops? For the seizures? Works really good for the seizures. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I started um, him back on the CBD. It's just, um, I need to like get a special pet one, I think, because he doesn't like the taste of it too much. But I do want to start incorporating that. This, uh, the Dad's Elixir guys, I'm sure you know that, about them. Um, yeah they do a killer cbd line for dogs and like spoon my dog she's 16 she gets it on every meal like they're they're really it's really nice stuff so check them out i definitely will thank you so much let's see this episode brought to you by weird audio you guys i do need to put a plug for weird audio they have sent me a ton of musical equipment and microphones and all kinds of good shit. weird audio is out of austin texas and if you guys are around in town hit them up for all your recording needs they also sell these amazing mics um actually let me grab it really quick um they sent these to me with the case and everything Dang. and it has like the whole you know box all the stuff that you need to like run it weird audio and these little condenser mics um that are really pretty just really nice looking so if you guys uh, i will drop a link for the reviews in the comments if you guys need any recording needs hit up weird audio okay sorry for that we got paul tar in the house from colorado we got davy brown we got sammy we got michael v he says you take some great underwater photography too brian super inspiring thanks brother appreciate that. <laughs> um, I love all of you so much. If you have any more questions, please drop them in the chat. We're almost going for an hour. It went by so fast. I'm uh, fun. It really does. It really does. I know I had somebody else up here. I'm going to go back on these comments. We've had so many people come in and out. Rick Bozart, this was awesome. Thanks, Brian, for all that you do. Surprise cover of Aqua coming when it gets warm here in front of that king. Thanks, Rick. So Rick, really talk about inspiring and like heart vibes. Like Rick, a couple of times he sent me covers. Like he did a cover of our song Aqua Blue. And I cannot tell you, Rick, and, and anybody, I mean, if you do that for an artist, like, especially like where we're at, like our level of it. I mean, it's like the fact that I, that some lyrics of mine could exist in someone else's head and that they would enjoy that, enjoy to like sing it. And he's, he's like playing in public, like wherever he was, I think in Virginia beach or something, but like, wow, I was so stoked. So I can't wait to share that video. And like, thank you, Rick and everybody for doing like, I see so much support and so much love coming um reflecting back and like it's just it's i'm so happy and thanks sunshine for having me up and uh absolutely yeah. i'm so stoked to have you on the show it has been a long time coming buddy so i'm just I, and, and it couldn't come at a perfecter time if that is that a word perfecter it is now everybody yeah. um, because tomorrow is the release date and i cannot stress this enough and i'm gonna like post 
post all day long and tomorrow you guys have to go and pre-save and check out the album tomorrow this is a lot of hard work coming to fruitation it's insane like it's so weird because it really takes like back to the diy thing looking at it from the marketing campaigning perspective of how like it seems easy and it's easy to disregard when you see like click the link and follow my album and then it's like ugh, like whatever but it's insane how much effort it takes to get just someone to click something like, this is for free it's like you can listen to it on spotify for free the bands are not making a lot of money off of this stuff so like it really means a lot to see the numbers inflate a little bit and just to know people are listening and so like i super appreciate it and i know how like it's hard being and like I'm kind of believe it or not how chatty I've been I'm rather introverted so it's like to constantly be like hey listen to my listen to my stuff have you heard like like I can't like force like I don't want that so like just thanks if you tuned in and you like it and you clicked it like means a lot to me and thank you so like thanks Ah, you are quite the character, Brian. Oh my goodness. I love it too much. I love your energy, your spirit, your love for the ocean and your love for animals. Very cool, dude. Same here. I'm a super big, ever since the pig, like, oh my gosh, like the pig is amazing. I'm a super big pig fan. I want one someday in my life. He is a whole, uh, he's a whole vibe, that piggy pig. I'll tell you what. Sammy says, if we are new to Spotify, what exactly do we, if we are new to Spotify, what exactly do we need to do like and all that stuff? See, I had to read Sammy's comment first because he's been known to drop some, some interesting things. <laughs> so I pre-read it to make sure that this was good for the podcast. I'm <laughs> just joking. So if we're new to Spotify, what exactly do we need to do to get in on the action? Oh, it's so, it's so, yeah, it's obnoxious. You got to click in, you got to search for Synergy. So S-Y-N-R-G-Y without the E, don't put the E in there, Synergy. And you got to, you can, whatever you're clicking, whatever buttons and icons are available at that page, just click a bunch of buttons, like green buttons, hearts, anything that looks like positive, click all that good stuff, add it to your playlist. Like, this is what's crazy to me is like, when I started music, it was like, you better have your MySpace game on lock, dude. Like, are you anybody? Are you anybody? <laughs> like, how is anyone going to know you? If you don't have MySpace, like I remember looking at Revolution's MySpace, they're like, oh my God, 7,000 followers. Like, literally, I remember that as a kid, a era like, you know, that wasn't that long ago, but whatever. Um, and now it's seeing it evolve. And you have to realize us musicians are evolving with this, whatever the fad goes, that's where we are all kind of like in this weird thing. So it's like, now it's Facebook. It's like you spent four, five years getting everyone to click Facebook. And then it was Instagram. Like, you ain't nothing on Facebook. You have to, and now it's like, if you're not on TikTok and you have a thousand subscribers on YouTube, who are you, dude? You have nothing. And it's like, can we just like stop and just, you know, like how many do you, how many, and then you have venues that are like, well, how many Spotify listeners do you have in our region? And you're like, dude, this is where we're at now. Like, fuck. like, so it's rough. It's out. It's rough. Like, it is. Staying it out is yeah it is rough even trying to get like endorsements and and sponsorships that's what they look at they want to know what are your followers how many days are you out on the road how many views do you have how many this this and this it's not even necessarily like how good you pay it play anymore it's like more about oh. what's your influence on the community that you're serving us, i guess i love where you just tipped off on the iceberg there that like it is less about the musical talent of any band. Music is not about the music and everyone needs to understand that. It is about the marketing and it is about that's, that convincing people that it is something, that's all. I mean, it's like, I've been wrapping my mind around it for a really long time. Um, radio stations and record, like record labels own the radio stations, you know, or they're like, telling them and endorsing them what to play like hand feeding them what to play so if you're not in with labels and it's like it's just really difficult to like 
make a splash and get out of the like I call it the trenches you know like all these bands we're all trying to get out of the trenches you know and like it's really difficult and some people get lucky you know I guess and they just strike gold like that one you know like you've never and then you people they've never played one show but they have a TikTok reel that has a trillion views and the first show they play it it's at the grammys or something and you're like dude how is this possible it's like so frustrating so i try to like again keep my expectations low or else i get really sad and upset so like just listen <laughs> it sounds easy right like it, it kind of reminds me of like new year's eve like i try to keep my expectations low because i used to like be like oh my god new year's is gonna be the best and we're gonna rage and we're gonna have you know and i'd be asleep before midnight or some shit and i'm like no at this point like i set my bar low so i can be like impressed <laughs> that really works Oh my God, you guys are having the best time. Michael, thank you so much for dropping that YouTube Synergy premiere link. Jesse says, just click all the buttons on Spotify. I agree. Um, Lindsay says she's going to link Spotify and pre-save in Rocksteady Collective. If you guys at home do not know what Rocksteady Collective is, please go check it out today on Facebook. It is an amazing Facebook group for all musicians to come together and share all the things. Paul says, that's crazy. We just used an old tape deck back in my day. <laughs> uh, Jesse says, oh, wow, you get asked numbered. You get asked number of followers in the area. I mean, it's a true. That's thing. a fact. Uh, yeah, that has been a question before. Yeah, people want to know if you're worth anything. And I get it. I mean, it's like, because it's hard for them too. It's hard for bars. How many I've seen bars lose their butts on shows so many times too. So it's like, it's just a hard industry, which is kind of a shame. Like, why is that? You know, when we figure out the answer, then we will have the golden answer and we will write a free um, ebook on it. Okay. The recipe. Someone knows the recipe to this. <laughs> Um, we have a shout out really quick from Rick Bozart to Michael V. I love you, my homie. You're the reason I know this wonderful music by this wonderful human. Nice. We love that here. Uh, Jesse, you made it on my playlist after hearing just one song. Yes, girl. So we never really talked about how you got into music in the first place. Oh, how did I get in? Oh, uh, what? Well, like, I guess the cool story would be um, like the first song that I remember ever hearing, that I ever remember knowing the words to. I'm maybe three or four years old or something. You know, not like Baba Black Sheep and stuff, but like, <laughs> like, like a song on the radio, like the Beatles or something. You know, but for me, it was UB40. Can't help falling in love with you, whatever. Like the production of that song got a three year old, like, huh? Like, eh. and I was singing along to it. I knew it, but I didn't even know how to like describe what I was hearing. So I grew up and I was searching, searching, searching for this song. And once I could learn to like speak and communicate, I told my parents, like, a kind of islandy, kind of like, they they gathered what I was saying was kind of island box. So they actually bought me a Bob Marley CD, thinking this is probably what it was on the radio at that time. So they got me a legend Bob Marley CD, and that was like it wasn't what I was actually looking for at the time, but it was what I needed. You know, it was like because it totally changed my whole vision of of everything because I didn't know reggae even existed like that. And so uh, that was the beginning of interest in Rastafarian culture and reggae culture and uh, cannabis culture. And yeah, so reggae, that obsession with reggae was really young. It was like fourth grade, just really getting into it. My sister was a huge inspiration on my, like I saw her fall in love with music before I did. She's an av, at the time she was like a fanatical Gwen Stefani fan. Oh, and gotta love Gwen. Yeah, I'm talking like she tell my mom she would have to have two copies of a magazine that Gwen would be on, one for like her archives so she could like 
have it in in just like the back room and once she could like cut out the face and like staple them like she was like that i saw her fall in love with no doubt you know and so sublime was there and like all these cool ska kind of throwback ska bands really fish was my first show you know so i was like seeing her inspired me and then i ended up taking like off with reggae and like really getting into it you know really hard so that was kind of the beginning of my obsession with music oh my god i love that so much did you actually uh do band or anything in middle school or high school or i did i did like i maybe i was seven my mom got me a piano and i like would play on the like uh, you know, like Mary had a little lamb and stuff. And then when I was in school, I got me on an alto saxophone in middle school, got a lead guitar, didn't know how to play, but you know, you just mess around enough. And then I had some friends that in the neighborhood that his dad would actually have gear, like nice gear and was jamming with his kids and stuff. So we used to always play with at his house. And uh, then it was just like, Weird. Yeah, it was amazing. Everything after that. I, I play, I, I like playing anything that makes noise, just tinkering. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. So do you playing. still play the saxophone? I don't, like, I would sound horrible at it because it's so much, like your aperture. lips, mm -hmm. it hurts, that aperture stuff. Oh my God. So no, I like have, I still have mine though, but no, I would sound horrible. I would get put to shame, but um, <laughs> um let's see we got don mcdaniel and Lindsay in the chat so here is don mcdaniel and here is Lindsay. okay you guys i wear them on my mug at all times my favorites and i love them so much Lindsay says i love when parents cultivate the music love i really do too because that's where my background comes from my mom always pushed me to do music you know so um Actually, funny story, um, my mom's band director was my grandma's band director, my mama's band director, my brother's band director, and my fucking band director. And he's still directing. No. Mr. Molina, what's up? I see you out there. Uh, what a, that's a labor of love. No kidding. Like being a, a, a musical school teacher. Oh my gosh. Dude, and he's he's such a g like they always get all ones and they always go to all state like the marching band and shit like that like mr molina is a whole lot of damn ass legend down in south texas um <clears throat> let's can you see. imagine can you imagine how many musicians he's inspired like it must feel so good the feedback mechanism on that job though because like 30 years goes by and you're like hey i'm doing music and i'm like doing audio stuff and he's like oh that's that's like he had a role in that you know like that's really cool it's so oh. fucking cool oh my god and you know i started my son at nine years old on the still pan we had a community still pan band in austin texas and so he did that but he really uh went more towards the artist artist side and so whenever he wanted to do that that's fine i encourage him whatever makes him happy but i was like really hoping he was going to be a musician you know but in his heart i know that he, he is so um we got that uh, Lindsay says mr molina is obviously a vampire mr molina i tagged you if you're watching this you let me know are you a vampire or are you just a legend oh my god i love you you are the best band director um let's see rick says tinkery is the way to be these days tinkering tinkery yeah tinkery tinkery baby okay listen my mom wants to tell you that you're very handsome and she loves the new look either way you are a handsome young man inside and out left mama can too aka mom thanks mom oh it's so sweet i'm blushing, blushing right now hey 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 hey! can we not right now welcome to the sunshine show hey, 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 hey. stop uh let's see hey can you not so i asked we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping this up we've been on an hour and i know that you have a lot of stuff that you need to do i appreciate your time so much one question i ask all of my um guests if you could throw a dinner party for any five musicians, alive or dead, who would those musicians be and what would you serve at your dinner party? 
Okay, so a dinner party. Um, well, yeah, clearly Bob Marley, Bradley Noel, probably got to be like well, Dead or Alive, too. Uh, I mean, I feel you got to throw a Beatle in there, you know, like, but which one, you know? I don't know which Beatle would make it. I don't know. Like, everyone wants to say John, but like, I feel like it might be Paul for a weird reason. I don't know. Or maybe George. I don't know. I know George you done. But, uh, and, God, uh, let's, uh, I don't know. Let's get a lady in there. Like, definitely like Ella Fitzgerald or something. Ooh, that would be amazing. Just to pick her brain and talk to her and stuff. Hell yeah. Okay, was that five? I think that was five, right? Four or five. I don't know. No, I think that was only four. So you have one more person. Um, oh, wait. Let's hear these comments really quick. Lindsay says, fucking throw Ringo in there. Be a rebel. Sammy says McCartney. And Jesse says George Harrison for the win. <laughs> it would be difficult. Like, I would want them each for different reasons. You know, like, I would want to, like, trip with George I would want to pick Paul's like sing with Paul I would just want to hang out with John like make some art and shit you know um probably another one of the like original like maybe like uh some old school reggae stuff oh probably Von Benjamin of Midnight probably because I never got to really hang out with him and meet him but it seemed like he had a lot of amazing things to offer and say and stuff and uh, Clinton Furon too. If you're out there, I'm a really big fan of his music, and I think that would be really fun to just sit and hang out with all those guys together. It would be epic. Bunny Whaler, like, come on, Peter Tosh, are you kidding me? Okay, you've gone over your five guest limit. Okay, Mister. <laughs> that was a terrible question. That was probably the hardest part of the whole interview. <laughs> what That's are you cool. serving at your dinner party? Ooh, well, I'll, I'll probably Indian food, like vegan or vegetarian like really nice like uh tikka masala like chickpea butternut squash tikka masalas and curries and basmati rice like i really am into himalayan right now and you know that's what they would all want to i'm sure well uh i'm coming to the party whether i'm invited or not okay i'm crashing that party because that's my favorite kind of food uh i love ethiopian food and sri lankan food oh my god so like good. i like getting stuff i have a hard time making like you know what i mean like because i don't have the spices like i need to get i need to like I want to take a class, an Indian cooking class. But yeah, I just want to say thanks so much for having me. It was so fun talking with you. And thanks for making oh. the time switch. And like, um, I'm going to go scuba dive tonight, but I have a big full heart and a big full belly and a he big head from this interview. So I appreciate it. It was so nice. I, I appreciate you so much. Um, I appreciate everybody at home, everybody that's participated in the chat, everybody listening on the podcast. You guys, we're going to wrap this up until next time remember um that you need to go and listen to brian's album that's dropping tomorrow first and foremost i will link that um i will put that link in the comments um make sure that you are kind to everybody you never know these struggles people are dealing with make sure to put a smile on your face if anything it makes you feel a little bit better stay safe out there and keep fucking rocking and rolling i love all of y'all i love you brian thank you so much have a wonderful time tonight and tomorrow and all the month it's your month. <laughs> Literally. Thank you so much. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs>